Hey everyone and welcome back. Uh, today was Apple's September event. Well, their unusual September event. This was an event that's normally dedicated to the Apple Watch and iPhone. Uh, this year, things are things are different this year. <laughs> so uh, it is just about the Apple Watch and the iPad. Now, I love the iPad. I have lots of thoughts about iPads, but I'm gonna set those aside. I'm just gonna talk about the Apple Watch today because that's my passion. Like this, this is my favorite Apple accessory. I love it. And so I wanted to talk about kind of my thoughts on what they announced and specifically, um, I don't want to talk about the exact feature set that they released. Like you can go to Apple's site and uh, see those. You watched the presentation, you probably saw that. So I'm not going to worry about going into the specs and everything. I want to talk about the three things that they showed today about what they think about this product line and kind of what I think that means for the company and the product moving forward. So point number one is that they are lean into health. And this is nothing new for the Apple Watch. They've been leaning into health for years at this point. But it's very interesting to see kind of how the product started in 2015 or 2014 when it was announced. They talked all about the utility of it uh, from uh, doing your smart lights, obviously, and doing some fitness tracking. But they talked about shopping on it. They talked about like browsing like social media on it and everything like the aspirations for it at the start versus where they are now have changed quite a bit. And you can see that in how Apple talks about the product. They really talk about health first and foremost now. And so uh, whether that's uh, Tim talking about like emails that he gets from customers who have really great experiences with the watch to these videos that they do, I think every year, it's been at least three years now, they do these videos with these heartfelt stories from people whose lives were saved or lives were changed because of the Apple Watch. And they're very, I mean, they're very touching. Like, obviously, they're <laughs> they're they're trying to get an emotional reaction from you. They're trying to make it so that you have an emotional connection to this product. But it works, and like, there's not a lot of products out there that can do that. And then when you look at the ad that they released, uh, I think it was a minute long, but it basically the the joke of it is someone saying, "Oh, it would be great if in the future we had some sort of wearable device that did this and this and this." And there are all these like aspirational health things, and the people are just like, "It already does that." And it is kind of interesting to look at this product with um, just looking at it years later. It's only been five years. Like it's been five and a half years since the original Apple Watch came out. And it's just amazing when they add one or two new health features a year, how much it adds up to. Like the amount of stuff going on on your wrist uh, with an Apple Watch is astounding. And it's really incredible. And if you're lucky, you don't have to worry about it because your life is fine, everything is going great. But there are cases where you fall, where your heart rate starts to go crazy or something where it's an early detector that something is wrong, you need to go check something out. And that's not something you can say about a lot of products uh, that are especially this mainstream. So that's really cool. Um, really nice to see Apple lean into this. Uh, they talked about governments who are uh, encouraging it, health companies who are encouraging it. So th there's, a, there's a lot going on there with health and they keep pushing hard on that. Number two is design. So design was a big focus of this new model. So uh, there's a the body shape is exactly the same as before. So the series four, five, and six all have the same shape, and now the uh, SE as well has the same shape. But there's new colors this year. There's new colors, um, and there's more fun colors. Like they went more crazy, more crazy than I think a lot of people expected. There's a blue aluminum one and a product red one as well, and those look really nice. And not only that, um, I was actually recording my watchOS 7 review, which apparently will be coming out tomorrow because watchOS 7 comes out tomorrow. Um, and I was lamenting how there was only one new watch face this year. Well, Apple threw a wrench in that as <laughs> they unveiled. Uh, there's not one, there's seven new watch faces coming. Uh, so, and the watch faces look great. The watch faces not only look good, there's, you know, there's tons of Apple watch faces, but these are, these are focused more on customization. There's lots of customization options with these, like the stripes one. There's stripes, yes, but you can choose the exact colors you want for each stripe. So you could have one for your favorite sports team, your favorite country, whatever you want to do. And there's new watch bands. There's three new watch bands. They come in these cool um, patterns, new new colors. All the old watch bands got new colors as well. So the the seasonal lines is cycled and everything. So there's a lot of customization with uh, what they're doing with the Apple Watch this year, especially that blue aluminum one. I'm really, <laughs> it's not the one I got. I got one of the stainless steel ones for the first time ever actually, uh, which was really exciting. But that stainless steel one really tempted me. I was I, I, I like the look of that dark blue. And then three was they're trying to get the Apple Watch onto every wrist possible. Basically every wrist who owns an iPhone and who doesn't own an iPhone, or at least lives with people who have an iPhone. And so you can see this across everything. Like obviously this is what companies do. They wanna sell as many products, right? 
but Apple is really doing things with this product line to get it more, to make it more inclusive. And so you can see that with the uh, Apple Watch SE, which is their lower cost option that kind of much like the phone version has a couple trade-offs, yeah, but has all the main functionality that you need and is gonna last you for years if you buy it now. Uh, they also kept the uh, Apple Watch Series 3 around for another year, so that's still $200, which is a great starting point, which can get people in the door. Like, how much does an Apple Watch cost? Well, they start at $199. Okay, and that gets people listening <laughs> and thinking about it. And maybe they upgrade to the $279 SE or the $400 uh, Series 6, but that you get them in the door with that lower price. And, and of course, some people buy that uh, lower price one. And then there's family setup. And family setup is a way for you to buy an Apple Watch for your kid or for your older parent who maybe doesn't have an iPhone, isn't ready for an iPhone, doesn't want an iPhone, but you want them to have an Apple Watch because you want to be able to do like find my friends with them. Uh, you want to be able to communicate with them over iMessage. You want to do just all the things that you would do uh, with anyone else in your family. Um, and so you can get them an Apple Watch, you set it up with your iPhone, and then you give them the watch, and then you can manage it from your iPhone. So if they're a kid, you can do things like put it into the school time mode, so it puts it into this mode where they can't communicate, they can't really use it for much other than being a watch, and there's a special watch face that comes up to show that that's kind of what's happening. Um, you can get alerts when they go to specific locations or leave specific locations or go to places that you don't expect them to go maybe. And so there's a lot of stuff there. And so basically this is making it so that it's gonna get parents looking at it, kind of like your 40, 50 year old uh, year olds out there with your young kids or kind of older parents who are moving in like and they're taking care of them. It's making an Apple Watch more compelling for those people as well. So it's really expanding who can get it um, from a, a price perspective, but also from a uh, just a capabilities perspective. It gets it into more hands because, or more wrists, I should say, <laughs> because uh, it, it, there's there's ways you can do it without having an iPhone. Uh, it's, it's making it so that it's not running totally on its own. Like that's a thing that we could get to one day, where the Apple Watches you just buy an Apple Watch, you turn it on, and then it just goes like an iPhone, you don't need to plug it into anything or connect it to anything. Um, we're not there yet, maybe we'll never get there, but this is kind of one step in that direction of you don't have to have an iPhone if you're gonna use an Apple Watch, um, and that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's it. Uh, this is recorded, like I said, minutes after the keynote, um, so or, it's key, or whatever the event. So I don't have all the information if there's special stuff that came out. Um, I do know that watchOS 7 and iOS 14 are coming out tomorrow, so that's exciting. So keep an eye out tomorrow for my watchOS 7 review as well. Uh, if you wanna check that out, you should subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. You know you know all the things to do. Uh, this, is, this is Apple season, so we <laughs> have a lot of videos coming up. I'm gonna do a review of watchOS 7 tomorrow. Uh, as soon as I get my Apple Watch, I'll do an impressions uh, and eventually a review of that as well. So lots of stuff coming down. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.